Uh, so I want to introduce uh, everyone to our uh, Monin team. Uh, they will do uh, more of their self-introduction, uh, but I am going to hand it over to Heather. Heather is amazing and she has a lot to share. So handing it over to you, Heather. Thank you, Kayla. We're really excited to be here today. I'm just going to um, get my slides going here. Share my screen. So we're really excited to be here today. I've got my my, my lovely Dre. He's in uh, the grapevine in our cafe. You can see the awesome display he has behind him. But we're going to dive into our 2024 trends and connect them to some awesome spring drinks that you can make in your restaurants or cafes. Just to give you a quick overview, um, we do have Vittorio. He's our business development manager and works with Lolly Cup closely. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us today, but he's here in spirit with us. Um, I'm Heather. I'm a senior marketing manager and I support our field sales team. I've been at Monin for over 15 years and I have a lot of experience working with distributors and customers. Um, and I am based in our headquarters in the US in Clearwater, Florida. And Dre, do you want to um, introduce yourself, yourself or I, do you want me to? <laughs> I, I can, absolutely. Okay. Can I be here? Am I, am I heard? Yes, we can hear you. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Dre. Um, I'm here in Dallas, Texas at the Innovation Center that we have. Um, one of three that we have, one in Clearwater, one in Dallas, and one in uh, Sparks, Nevada, Reno. Um, but yeah, I've been with Monin five years. I've been in this industry pushing 15 years, and I'm excited to be here and uh, kind of introduce you guys to what we do and uh, how easy it is to do it. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Dre. So just before we get started, um, Kayla mentioned that there's going to be a couple questions and you have a chance to win a prize. Um, we're going to send you guys a cool um, cooler filled with some Monin accessories. Um, we're also going to send some of our brand new products. Um, you can see some pictures here of our ube, our black sugar, and we just recently launched sugar-free lavender and a hydration boost. And I'm super excited because next week we are launching our next latest flavor and you guys will, the winners will get their hands on a bottle of that as well, along with rack and pumps for these products as well. So make sure you guys are paying attention and you're ready to answer those questions. So I'm gonna just jump in um, to give you a brief overview about Monin and in case you don't know who we are, um, we are, a third generation family owned company. We are based um, out of Bourges, France. And from the beginning of time, passion has been extremely important to Monin. And the slogan has always been passion for quality. You will see this in every um, facet of our business. And it's our mission to ensure the best quality products and services are available for our customers. Um, Although we're a French-based company, like I said, we, um, Dre and I are located in the U.S. I'm in Clearwater, Florida, which is our U.S. headquarters, um, but we do have a global um, scape. You can see we're covered across the globe, and we have over 200 flavoring products, and we ship to 145 countries around the world. From here in the U.S. specifically, uh, we produce for around 33 countries. Here's just a quick overview of our footprint in the U.S. Um, we've got our headquarters in Clearwater with our production facility. Um, we have our Sparks Nevada facility um, that has production and distribution. And we just opened that um, four years ago, and we are already expanding that uh, facility, which we're really excited about. Um, and then we've got our, our newer distribution center in Zelenopal, Pennsylvania. And we ship from Largo, uh, Florida as well, which is just south of our office here. But the loyalty from our customers has really driven the continued growth. Um, and be, with our different ship points, we can deliver faster, reduce shipping costs and the environmental impact. Um, we do love giving back to the community and the environment. Here's just a couple examples. Um, we work with Step Up for Students, which is a uh, uh, giving children uh, scholarships for different mm -hmm. school opportunities. We also support CORE, which is children of restaurant employees. And we do a lot of local um, uh, work with the city on doing 
being smart and uh, strategic with our waste. As you can imagine, we go through a lot of water. So we've done a lot to reduce uh, the impact of that. And my favorite topic is our bees. Um, we have three beehives on our property here in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, but back in 2008 is really when our relationship um, began with bee farmers. We had an employee that had an idea um, on what to do with old and expired syrup that we couldn't just dump down the drain. So we've been recycling our syrup and giving it to bee farmers. And we've grown the program to work with bee farmers in P Pennsylvania um, and Nevada and obviously here in Clearwater, Florida. So I'm just going to jump in to a brief overview of our products, and then we'll get to the fun stuff with Dre making drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Monin products are made with the finest ingredients sourced from around the world. Uh, like that global uh, slide showed you, we do have plants around the world, and that means we also have great relationships with flavor suppliers and ingredients around the world. Um, our vanilla flavor, for example, comes from Madagascar. Van uh, from Madagascar. Um, during the production uh, process, we flash pasteurize our products to ensure freshness. So you get that quality taste no matter what time of the life of the product you taste it. It's always going to taste the same. Um, majority of our products are shelf stable and require no refrigeration. They're super easy to use in store. It's consistent um, and reliable with the flavor. It's versatile, and I, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because you can make so many things with one bottle of syrup, whether it's a tea, a lemonade, flavoring a coffee, maybe making flavoring a frosting for a cupcake or including in a vinaigrette for a salad dressing. And we do have flavors available all year round. Um, my favorite, if you want a pumpkin spice latte, you know, in March, you can have it and it's gonna taste the same as you do in the fall. And an overarching um, theme for our products, we're clean label, we're the industry leader in clean label solutions. Uh, the majority of our products are made with no artificial ingredients, including flavors, colors, or preservatives. Here's a quick uh, snapshot of our different product lines. I won't go in too much depth because we have a lot, but our number one product line is premium syrups, and we're going to show you um, a few of those in our recipes today. We also have sugar-free syrup. We do have a really unique line called Natural Zero. That is an uh, all-natural sugar-free line. First to the market, we use um, uh, Splenda and Erythritol as the sweeter sweeteners in that. We have an organic line, and we also have a line of different sweeteners that includes agave, sugar-free sweetener, and then we have the honey um, that also lives in the organic line. We have beverage concentrates, which include uh, easy ways for operators to make coffee drinks if they don't have space for um, uh, espresso machines or coffee machines. We have fruit purees, fruit smoothies, sauces, concentrated flavor, is a product that it delivers a robust amount of flavor in a 3 ml pump, so it doesn't take much. It's great for layering in so your drinks don't get too sweet. We have the home corrected cocktail mixers, and then a newer line um, are functional boosts, which we have energy, total immunity boost, and we just launched the hydration boost. So as you can see, we have so many different products, solutions for all sorts of beverages, um, and there's really something for everybody in our portfolio. Just a quick overview, why Monin? We have high quality products, we're easy to use, and we have unbeatable customer service. We like to say what's behind the bottle with Monin. You don't just get a bottle of Ube like the picture shows. You get all the support um, from our sales team, our marketing team. Of over, we have 25 people on our marketing team. We've got Dre and the whole innovation team. We're all every day working to supply our customers and operators with what they need to be successful to increase your profits. So I'm, I'm excited to talk real quick about our new products. Ube is our flavor of the year. We're super excited. It's, uh, it's Ube with a twist. If people are familiar with the Ube flavor, we have hints of vi um, fig, vanilla, and cinnamon. Uh, we wanted to pair some flavors that people are familiar with with this to give it an edge, and it's been really exciting um, 
seen this starting to pop up on menus from our customers. Black sugar, we launched later last year, but I think it's a really great flavor. It's excellent for boba drinks. Um, and it's been a really long time since we've launched a sugar-free flavor. Lavender is in our top 10 selling flavors, so we were really excited to add it to our sugar-free line. Just in time for spring. Hydration Boost is a great product. Um, at, consumers are looking for functional, functional ingredients to be added into their drinks. Um, and we're super excited to add that to our Boost line. And if you've noticed, we've got our brand new matcha green tea. This is launching officially next week. Um, we're really excited. It's a great product. It's very easy now for operators to add matcha um, drinks to their menus when they might not have the time or space to be able to make it the traditional way. And don't forget the winners will each get a bottle of that product. All right, that's gonna take us to our first pop quiz question. All what? right, my yep. favorite. Oh, <laughs> yes. Thank you for, for all of that. That sounds so cool. Uh, definitely um, like, you know, when you get Monin, you get the whole team. That's really cool. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, we're gonna be posting up a poll. So even if oh, here he goes. What is Monin's 2024 flavor of the year? Is it A strawberry rose? B ube? C passion fruit or D hot honey? All right, put in your votes now. So uh, if you have, uh, if you participate, then you will have a chance to win what uh, our lovely Heather just said. Modern products. That's yeah. so exciting. Okay. So remember <laughs> to put it in the poll and not the chat because that's what we will be using to put into our raffle. And you don't want to miss the raffle. So make sure you put it into the poll. I'm going to give it another like 10 seconds and then I will close the poll. So be sure to vote now. Okay, wow. I see your answers. So many people. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting. All right. All right. So five, four, three, two, one. The poll has closed. So we will be doing the raffle uh, during the next pop quiz. So stay tuned. Back to you, Heather. Great. Thanks, Kayla. I saw a lot of right answers in there, so that's a good sign. <laughs> All right. Um, to kick off our um, innovation part of the um, seminar, we are going to go over our 2024 flavor trends. We have oh, team. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Heather. There's a question that just popped yeah. up in the chat. Okay. And someone asked, how does one determine which syrup to use? Strawberry, for example, Lollipop has one that is thicker in consistency versus the Monin, which is more watery. Okay, that's a good question. Um, when you're using Monin strawberry syrup, for example, um, it works, it mixes seamlessly in beverages. Um, I know for Monin, we also have a strawberry puree, and that is a little bit thicker um, in consistency, but when, it does mix well with beverages, but it gives you that fruit particulate um, that the strawberry syrup does not. So I hope that answers the question. All right, yes. perfect, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. um, just as a snapshot of our 2024 flavor trends, um, like I mentioned, when you get um, when you're a Monin customer, you have access to a lot of great resources. Internally, we have a marketing team, our R and D team. Um, our innovation team, and all year we are out looking for what's next, what's happening, what's trending. So from all of our research, every year we launch our own trends, and we are going to be talking about them um, throughout the rest of the presentation. So I'm going to jump into the first one. Um, well, oops, I'm so sorry, just hit the wrong thing here. Um, while we might be tired talking about comfort and nostalgia, it's not going away anytime soon. Our first trend, Timeless Temptations, highlights why consumers are tempted by seasonal fruits, indulgence, and fun. Why do consumers gravitate towards comfort and nostalgia? 
Uh, we seek food for comfort in our feelings, whether we're happy or sad or stressed, we tend to go to these different flavors um, in food and beverage to help comfort us. Um, and we do find that 82% are indulging at least once a week. So while they're choosing comfort, they're willing to splurge on foods and beverages that make them happy. 72% of consumers enjoy things that remind them of their childhood. That could be watermelon, cotton candy, or toasted marshmallow. All flavors that represent summer tastes like when you were younger. And now as an adult, we can have fun using these nostalgic flavors with a twist, like maybe a spicy watermelon. So now we're gonna have Dre show us how to make a delicious spicy watermelon. That was, uh, that was an in incredible segue. That was <laughs> an incredible... <laughs> well played. Um, let's see, is it, is it me now? Yeah. All I right. Um, it's Are still we gonna... me, Kayla. Are we gonna have the slide up there or we... not? Um, oh, I can. I, I'll put it back up. I'm so sorry. I can put it back up when you're done. No, I, I don't need it. I don't need it. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so we're going to start off with a spicy watermelon lemonade. Like Heather said, um, we're going to be using two molten ingredients uh, for this one. It's going to be uh, three quarters of a watermelon syrup, and we're going to use our concentrated flavor of jalapeno, which we're going to use in the format of one ounce. Um, so I'm going to have these here so we can see it clearly of what I'm doing. Um, a lot of the time, uh, the products make me look a lot better than I really am. Uh, just because they're absolutely delicious and it's absolutely simple to use. Um, so we tend to want to overcomplicate things just because we're seeking for this like over-the-top beverage where a lot of times the bottle already does all the work for us. Um, so let's go ahead and show you just how simple it is to make a spicy watermelon lemonade, which is on trend. Um, we love watermelon. Watermelon does pickle that nostalgia button. Um, and I feel like we're looking for flavors that everyone kind of just reminisces of back in the day. Oh, I have a story from when I was blah, blah, blah. Like Heather said, we seek for comfort and all that like nostalgic uh, flavors that really kind of make us feel better about ourselves. So uh, we're going to start off with filling our cup with ice. Um, if you're utilizing pump, uh, Monin's pump for their syrups work at a quarter ounce. Um, so uh, this particular recipe uh, for three quarters of an ounce, we would be utilizing three, three pumps. Um, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and measure it. Um, so it's three quarters of watermelon syrup, um, which is going to deliver beautiful color and great flavor. Uh, one pump of concentrated flavor jalapeno, which um, will be just like that. Three milliliters, again, heavily concentrated. Um, I wouldn't recommend we use more than two pumps of almost any of the concentrated flavors. Uh, most definitely the herbs, uh, the basils and the mint. Absolutely, I would just use one pump. Uh, but again, every recipe is different, so you just have to play with it. Um, so one pump of jalapeno, uh, three pumps of watermelon syrup, and then we're going to go ahead and fill it with lemonade, which would be seven ounces. Um, traditionally, uh, in a 16-ounce glass, we like to do an ounce to seven ounces of liquid, uh, particularly with lemonade. Uh, it is already sweet because of the lemonade has sugar in it, so we like to pull the monin back to three quarters. Um, we live in a world where a little is more. So... We don't have to go over the top with a bunch of pumps or anything like that. Three quarters of a flavor is going to deliver all the watermelon that you're looking for in the thing. Um, so we're just going to head and give it a simple roll, just like that. Uh, go in with our garnish, which is going to be a jalapeno pepper, a lemon, uh, and a watermelon. Looks great, Dre. Thank you very much. And that is this and this. Great. Now I'm going to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Great. All right. We will jump into the next trend. All right. Oh. <laughs> okay. And here's the recipe. Um, that I believe you guys will be able to download this after uh, the presentation. All right, next we're gonna talk about Kitchen Meats Bar. Um, save your ingredients and techniques from the dinner menu, dinner menu are uh, moving to beverage. We're really seeing ingredients from the back of house trickle to the front of the house. Um, operators are stretching diners' palates and imaginations, um, bringing culinary uh, into the cocktail, mocktail, and beverage menu. 
Uh, we're also seeing it in the uh, garnishes. Um, we here at Monin at the end of every week, like kind of look at what we've got left with our ingredients. And sometimes we have a lot of lemons or limes left over and our innovation team will slice them up and they'll dehydrate them. And they're great for garnishes. So we have no waste with the, um, the food that we weren't able to use that week. Uh, we also sometimes freeze some of our fruits and berries. So those are just a couple uh, examples. 40% of people are very likely to order a cocktail or mocktail with savory elements. It's not just a Bloody Mary anymore. You really are starting to see smoky elements in beverages and also spices and herbs like ginger and basil and golden turmeric. For this trend, Dre is going to show us a couple drinks. Um, one is featuring a technique that you might use in, to make a dessert. He's going to make a, um, oops, sorry about that, a brulee <clears throat> ube uh, latte. And then he's going to show, I'm so sorry, I can't see my menu for uh, this got messed up. I'm so sorry. The uh, cucumber basil fresh tea. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Dre, take it away. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to step away for one second just to uh, grab my fr uh, froth milk. Um, but other than that, we'll just walk through the recipe here. Um, okay, so we're going to be doing our first coffee drink. We're going to be utilizing real espresso. I'm going to use two shots of espresso. And again, the recipe will pop up uh, once we're done with me. We'll show you the recipe, and again, you guys can get them. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do two shots of espresso, our ounce of monin, which we're going to split half and half, and then we're going to top it with steamed milk. And then we're going to brulee it with some sugar. So let's go ahead and show you what that's going to look like. I'm going to step over there and grab and uh, hit my start frosting my milk. Um, sorry. Good. That's okay. Thanks, Dre. It's really great. Um, Dre's featuring ube uh, in this latte. And this flavor is great in so many things. Um, ube margaritas, we're starting oh, to yeah. see uh, requests for um, from our team and our customers. Obviously, lemonade, it's delicious in, so. Yeah, it works great in dairy as well. I love that that cinnamon and fig, those notes really shine when I combine it with dairy. Um, so let's go ahead and show you what this is going to look like. We're going to get a half ounce of ube and a half ounce of vanilla creme, which is a slightly creamier texture of a vanilla. Uh, the vanilla creme is going to play into the creme brulee, which will which will brulee on top. That way, it kind of all plays with the garnish, also with the guts of the drink. So there's our monin. And again, if you were using pumps, it would be two pumps, two pumps. I do recommend an ounce in your in a, in a your typical coffee drink if we're going to be living in a sixteen ounce world. Um, so now that we have our monin, I'll go ahead and put my espresso. And then I'll come right back with my milk. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put a little milk on top. We're gonna make sure we get some good froth on there. So it's almost like we're living in a half cappuccino world. All right, once we have the froth right on top, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of sugar uh, right on top of the froth. Uh, and that's actually gonna be what I brulee. So add a little bit of, I'm adding brown sugar right onto the top of the drink and we're gonna take my torch and like you said, kitchen meets the bar now. So we're gonna go ahead and torch the top of that. We're gonna get this really pretty brulee looking and smell. Uh, I bet that smells amazing. <laughs> oh, it smells absolutely delicious. And not only does it smell delicious, it looks delicious. So this is, um, and we'll talk about that also very Instagrammable. So here, um, type of milk you'd recommend, uh, quite frankly, at this point in our lives, um, whatever the customer is looking for, uh, we kind of always live in that 2% whole milk world behind here, but now that there's so many alternative milks, coconut, oat, oat would be mm -hmm. delicious on this because you'll get that creaminess from the oat. Um, we don't want to overdo the creaminess, but I think that texture would be beautiful with this one particularly. Um, this is a hot drink. Um, it wouldn't really work cold just because if I was to froth, I was to, to hit it with the, with the brulee torch, um, you know, we're going to have a couple issues. So we're going to go ahead and garnish this with a beautiful vanilla bean. Um, and here we have a brulee ube latte, which is gonna be half ounce of ube, a half ounce of vanilla creme, your espresso, your froth milk, a little bit of froth on top, sugar, we're bruleeing it and garnish it with this really pretty vanilla bean. Great. If I had a cold foam whipped cream, would the brulee work? 
Um, I don't know. Science is going to science. I'm not going to answer that confidently just because it's something I'd want to test. But um, it makes sense to me that if I'm hitting something cold or something hot, it's going to melt down. Uh, but I mean, it's if you have extra sugar, uh, give it a shot. I mean, it might work and it might be amazing and you might you know find something new. Um, that's all we're about. Always looking for something new and something simple. So um, this is, again, super easy to execute once you get that brulee torch and uh, super on trend and cheers. Yeah, looks like dessert in a glass. I like it. Drinkable desserts. It, it tastes like dessert in a glass. <laughs> awesome. Mm. All right, so I'm going to go right into the next one, um, which is a simpler build. We're going to roll the mix, and that's a cucumber basil tea. So we're going to hit cucumber up with a half ounce. Now, why a half ounce? Um, cucumber tends to just be a stronger flavor. So like I said, um, as we notice as time goes on, uh, we don't really have to oversweeten drinks anymore. That's not kind of what people are asking for. So I'd always recommend start small, increase quarter ounce at a time. If you start too sweet, it's going to be extremely difficult to reel that back and to balance that drink. So always start off small and you can always add sugar, but it's difficult to take away sugar or at least sweetness. Um, so we're going to start off with, uh, we're going to get our cup. We're going to go ahead and fill it with ice. We're going to add a half ounce of cucumber syrup, uh, just because, like I said, the cucumber flavor tends to shine a little bit. So the recipe is done, so I know a half ounce is going to be the answer. But in a world where I was making this, I would start with a half, try it. If I needed more, I'd increase a quarter ounce at a time. But I know a half ounce is going to be exactly what I'm looking for. Now we're going to use our basil concentrated flavor, same format like we used the jalapeno last time. We're going to do one pump right into the cup. And then we're going to go ahead and fill it with our fresh brewed tea to the top. Again, super easy to execute. Dre, and we typically recommend unsweet tea. Um, if you use sweetened tea, it could um, alter the flavor and just be, be overall too sweet. Correct. We're gonna, we don't really want to put sugar on top of sugar. And like Heather was talking about with the concentrated flavor, that allows us to layer flavors without adding sugar. So here I have your unsweet tea isn't giving sugar. The concentrated flavor also isn't giving sugar, but it is giving heavy flavor on the basil. And then we're going to have a half ounce of cucumber, which is delivering cucumber flavor, but also lightly sweetening uh, the tea. So I've found that tea drinkers are very either I'm unsweet or I'm sweet. Uh, this kind of format kind of appeases both crowds. So you're going to have purest. Is that a flavor tea? No, this is just a fresh brewed black tea that I that I refrigerated. Uh, most of the teas that I'm using today, I'm just brewing them double double brew throwing them in the fridge, um, that way I get that flavor. So let's go ahead and give this a garnish because at Monin we like to garnish absolutely everything. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and put a basil sprig, a cucumber and a lemon as the garnish. That's my base. Boom. Oh, there it is. <sighs> and there we have the second drink, which is a Cucumber basil tea. That looks like the perfect spring drink to me. It really is, quite frankly. Dre, there was a question. Uh, how do you keep the tea from looking cloudy? It's more like clear it's not cloudy. My tea? I mean, again, I just brewed, like I told you, I got tea bags, brewed them. So like this is, for example, here's my green tea that I brewed earlier. Uh, not cloudy. Mm -hmm. um, I really wouldn't know why your tea is cloudy. Uh, but then again, you could also use like a pure leaf or some other kind of already brewed unsweetened black tea uh, where you just keep in the refrigerator and utilize that as your black tea. As long as they're using fresh black teas, uh, fresh tea, then it should be fine to utilize uh, a pre-made uh, tea already. Do you all offer sample size bottles of these flavors? Uh, we don't for <laughs> all of them, but um, do, I think you can contact Lolly Cup if you're interested. Or Kayla, we can give them more direction on samples. Absolutely. That works with lemonade rather than tea. Just keep in mind of your sweetness level. Um, so this is going to deliver a sweeter uh, uh, profile because of the lemonade and the sugar in the lemonade. Now, if you have a fresh lemonade that you're making yourself, um, you can tweak your sugar, about your sugar levels. But yeah, you will be able to kind of substitute that. But just keep in mind sugar levels. Pour your hot tea gradually before chilling it. You can also, and that's how you get rid of the cloudiness, I'm assuming. Thank you for that answer, whoever answered that. Okay. <laughs> Dre, I just wanted to add too, you could also make a palmer where you could layer yep. the tea and the Correct. lemonade for that one as well. Correct. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, again, yeah, the possibilities are endless with this. And yep. that's kind of a wonderful thing about it. So, yeah. So, exactly. Cheers. 
Cheers. Great. All, All right. right delicious. Let's, let's jump to our third trend. Oops. Sorry about this. Um, the next trend I'm going to talk about is our flavor journey trend. Um, bold, authentic flavors of Southeast Asia and Central America are really influencing beverage and culinary menus. I know I live um, in St. Petersburg, Florida, and we're seeing a lot of um, these types of restaurants and beverage uh, cafes opening, featuring these types of flavors. Because uh, people are really looking to embark on a flavor journey, not necessarily by actually going out there, but they want the flavors um, here in local establishments. And we're really starting to see that across menus. 73% um, of consumers are more likely to visit a restaurant that features new flavors and different flavors, and 66% will pay more. Um, we have a really great puree called yuzu puree, which is an elevated citrus. Obviously, our ube flavor falls right under this flavor journey. We're just bringing that flavor right here um, to easily ex access. Hibiscus takes you to the tropics as well as gu guava. And then another newer product we have is our spicy agave, which is delicious uh, in margaritas especially. So we have a lot of great flavors that really, once you taste them, you feel like you're traveling um, to Southeast Asia or Central America. And we love um, tasting those types of drinks and creating those kinds of drinks for our customers. So Dre has an awesome um, drink featuring our uh, hibiscus syrup and our yuzu puree, and it's a sparkling lemonade. So I'm going to hand it over to him. Cool. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna be making the yuzu hibiscus refresher next. Um, this one, we're gonna build over ice, so you're gonna have a really pretty layer effect here. Um, so we'll go ahead and add ice. We're, oh, and really quickly, so we are, we are gonna be using our syrup hibiscus and our uh, yuzu, which comes in a puree format. Um, unlike uh, syrups, uh, yuzu and the innovation team, we typically like to use a half ounce at a time. Um, and that's because our pump uh, for our puree comes in half ounces. So every pump that you do for a, a puree will come out in a half ounce format. Every pump that you do for a syrup will come out in a quarter ounce format. Um, so the recipes that we're developing uh, here on the innovation team, typically we will stick to the rudiments of a half ounce. So you'll see a half ounce and a one ounce, but you'll rarely ever see a three quarter ounce or a quarter ounce just because it's a difficult, it's a difficult pour in a measurement. Um, like Heather said, it is a little thicker. There is consistency. There are particulates. Um, no, you do not have to refrigerate the puree. The puree is stable. Um, but um, again, because you have that thickness and that particulate, um, we don't like to utilize it in those formats. We like to use it in a half ounce format. And because this is a lemonade, um, we're not going to use a whole ounce like I was talking about prior. We're going to keep it to three quarters. So we're going to do a half ounce of yuzu puree, which would be one ounce, which would be one pump and just a quarter ounce of hibiscus to deliver that tartness, earthy, sweet hibiscus flavor that we're looking for. And the beauty of our product being that it's natural is you can get away with a quarter ounce. Can you use the puree for ice cream mix? Of course. Yeah, puree, a puree loves ice cream. It loves dairy. You pour it right on top, stick a spoon in it and go to town. Soft serve preferred. You can do soft serve. You could do liquid ice cream. You could do non-dairy ice cream. You could do whatever ice cream your heart desires. Um, is there a difference in sweetness and strength? Um, yes and no. I mean, there is going to be more fruit. It is a little more fruit flavor on the puree. So again, if I'm using a flavor at a, a puree at a half ounce, um, I could get away with uh, a quarter ounce of syrup. Uh, sorry, three quarters ounce of syrup to be the equivalent of the half ounce for the puree. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock this out really quick. Um, oh, and I did want to show you, uh, just so we saw that thickness and what we were talking about. So like, if you see this, um, you do see little particulate and pieces of yuzu that are in the glass head. How do you decide to mix versus layer? That's such a tough question. Um, so operationally, you know, it's all about like what experience do you want to deliver to the guest, right? So if I deliver, if I hand them a drink that is really pretty, uh, like the one you're about to see that's layered, um, your flavors are layered. So if you stick it in with a straw and start drinking it, you might kind of drink it incorrectly, suck up syrup, and it's very pretty. But the presentation, I feel like sometimes doesn't justify the flavor. So I like to mix my drinks just because if the consumer doesn't stick a straw and move it around, which we typically do, I do understand that this is something that we do as a as a as a person. We're always just playing with the straw. But if we're not, then we're not really drinking the drink the way it was created. Um, so just something to think about. I think it's that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> Um, but so we have a quarter ounce of uh, hibiscus, a half ounce of yuzu.
and then we're gonna ha we're gonna hit it with our ice. We're gonna do four ounces of lemonade, and then we're gonna top with club soda. To Heather's point, uh, this could also be topped with a tea as well. Um, when I'm layering drinks, I do like to kind of agitate that bottom just to get that like gradient look that you just got right there. And we're gonna top it off with two ounces of club soda to the top. We are gonna garnish it with this absolutely beautiful dragon fruit that I that I was lucky to find. A lemon wedge and this lovely mint sprig I have here. I did see a question. Um, our purees do come with, a, they do have pumps. They're a half ounce um, when you pump them. And then Dre, there was a question about when to add ice. Oh, add, um, yeah, like, I mean, add I, the syrups I, first and then the ice, or does it matter? I don't, it, it really, it doesn't really, uh, I'm always I'm a big believer of the final product is what you're looking for. Yeah, we can add ice first, and as we add warm liquids to the ice, it'll dilute the ice. Um, so a lot of people like to add ice at the end, so that in the process of building the drink, I'm not diluting it. Uh, just because when you hit it with warm liquid or liquids that aren't that are room temp, um, just gonna naturally science is always gonna science. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love to make sure that the glass is full. Um, ice is your friend. That dilution, that natural dilution, that water, that ice will do. Um, will always be beneficial to the drink. Um, so just always keep that in mind. Dilution is your friend. You really want to fill the cup all the way to the top with ice when you're when you're building that recipe. For the pumps, my puree pumps never fit right. Any? Hmm. Hmm. That's an email. That's an email. <laughs> That's an, um, but yeah, there's your hibiscus refresher. Um, delicious. Very tropical. <laughs> it is. Can't wait to try it. <laughs> Very good. And interesting fact, yuzu puree, it's our owner, Olivia Monin's uh, favorite flavor. So our our chefs always have a yuzu pie waiting for him when he comes to visit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the yuzu, like you said, Olivia uh, Monin's favorite flavor is yuzu, and it is my favorite puree that we have. It's also yuzu. It's delicious. Um, I did see a question. You guys will get these recipes um, in an email from Lolly Cup along with the presentation. That's delicious. Uh, there was one question like a while ago. I think we oh. missed. Uh, they did ask, uh, what does the agave taste like? Well, agave. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> well, the agave, it's it's a it comes from a plant. It, so I Dre, I mean, it really has a fairly neutral flavor. You can yeah. it better than me. Yeah, it's very traditional. Uh, we actually import the most agave uh, in the country. No one does. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, this, uh, it, it's a very traditional agave. You'll get a little, like, of that smokiness kind of that you always get in agave, but it's still going to be very sweet, and it's going to be that agave sweet in it. Um, so it's not overly sweet. It's not, not sweet enough, and the color has this beautiful gold color um, that is absolutely great when you're mixing with lime juice or any other kind of citrus component to make a sour base. Yeah, and I was going to say that's our the number one application that we see it used in is creating um, your own sour mix for margaritas. Correct, because then you get to do the you know fresh organic uh, sour mix. So you can use yep. an organic agave, a fresh lime juice, and you get to say like a smoky honey. Smoky that's beautiful. Honey, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Will there be pure ube in the future? Uh, puree. I'm assuming they mean a puree. Uh, we're. I'm not sure. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> A great question. It is a good question. All right. All right. Great. Let's hop on over to the next trend here. All right. Let me just adjust my screen here. Okay. Um, uh, the next trend we're going to talk about is under the influencer. Um, we can't not talk about trends and not talk about influencers. Um, pulp cult pop culture is powerful. And when paired uh, with the reach of social media, it's really reshaping how we sip and savor and socialize. Um, influence uh, patrons by crafting expressive tailored menus that build a you had to be their moment worthy of sharing on social. Um, we're seeing that products are bold and novel and they really appear to nearly 40% of Gen Z uh the Gen Z, they're the ones that are out on TikTok searching for Instagrammable and trending drinks and foods. Um, I think we're always in the marketing department here at Monin talking about what they, what, what did you see on TikTok last night? And we're always testing out the latest and greatest on what we're seeing out there. 
Um, 67% of consumers want to see more fads and short-term trends offered on restaurant menus. So they're expecting if they see something on TikTok tomorrow, they're going to want to see it on a beverage menu within the next week. Um, I can say that one trend we really uh, saw last year, and it's still a thing, is Taylor Swift and lavender colored drinks. She really took that and to the next level. She served them at her concerts. Um, we're still getting requests from um, operators on what's a different purple drink because they connect with that. So trending flavors that we have been seeing, lavender, obviously that's driven by Taylor Swift as lately, but like I said before, it is and has been in our top 10 selling flavors for quite a while. Dragon fruit is another one with a vibrant purple color. We've got our desert pear, which is also a vibrant uh, purple. Pistachio has that great green flavor. And then rose, which is a great floral flavor. So we've been seeing a lot of these um, out there. And we want to give our operators ways that they can deliver um, these fads and short-term trends uh, on, on their beverage menus. So we're going to actually show a boba drink. Um, it's It's... Boba, I know it has been around for a long time, but it's really uh, going everywhere. I mean, like I said, I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, and every other week we have a new um, boba yeah. shop opening down here. And I know out in the West in California, they're prevalent, but we really, over the last couple of years, um, have seen them grow like crazy. But like I said, they don't want just plain boba anymore. They want an elevated boba featuring different flavors and colors and and toppings and, and everything. So Dre's going to show us um, a, let me go to the next slide, a strawberry rose milk tea with that lovely garnish there. <laughs> Which I already right. It's a beautiful garnish. All right, it so, is. Um, like Heather said, I can't throw a rock without hating a new boba place. Um, I'm here in Dallas, Texas, and it's the same. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're just everywhere. everywhere, which is great. We love it. Do you? It's, uh, we're all about that. So we're going to be uh, going to drink with tapioca pearls today. Uh, we do have boba pearls. There's different types of flavors. It's a whole different trend. Popping pearls are fantastic. I do agree. Um, mm -hmm. I love that idea uh, of definitely cross uh, finding complementary flavors with those popping pearls. You know, if you have a mango drink and then you'd pop it with passion fruit pearls or however it is that you approach it, even with the color, if you have a, you know, strawberry pearls, like, uh, you, you know, you can pop it off with a different color in the drink. So it's a lot of fun. Um, we're going to be using tapioca. We're going with a milk, uh, a milk tea recipe. So it's going to be a strawberry rose milk tea. So let's go ahead and show you what that's about. Well, we're going to start off by putting our verbal pearls at the bottom of uh, sorry, our tapioca pearls at the bottom of the glass and adding our ice. Uh, we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of strawberry rose, which is one of our floral liqueurs. Um, we like to combine our florals as well. So, you know, you may not be familiar with rose, but you're familiar with strawberry. So all of this is already in the bottle. You're going to have that sweet strawberryness, but you're also going to have that earthiness, sweetness of the rose um, in the tail end. So it's a well-balanced um, the syrup um, that, again, we're only going to be using in a three-quarter ounce format. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And then a quarter ounce of our vanilla syrup. Dre, in this recipe, do you really taste the vanilla or does it give it more of like a creamy uh, flavor? It is going to give it a little creaminess, but you will absolutely taste our vanilla. Um, yeah. Vanilla bean, uh, you know, out of all the flavors that Monin carries, uh, yeah. vanilla bean um, are number one. Are, are number one, no matter what. So always, <laughs> keep, always keep that in mind. We always want to find what's new and what's innovative and what's out there. But at the end of the day, vanilla, <laughs> vanilla, vanilla reigns king. Vanilla yeah. reigns king. Um, so then we're going to go ahead and split this with either uh, fresh blue black tea, uh, for sure. And then on the creamer aspect, that's going to be a conversation between you and your customer. Um, I'm going to be using a half and half right now. Um, but again, your dairy is the dairy that you'd like to use, whatever your customer is looking for. Um, with the combination of vanilla, strawberry rose being dairy friendly, um, you're not going to have any curls. So we're seeing here half and half. It's kind of just sitting at the bottom. You're not going to have any curls. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and then we're going to hit it with this absolutely lovely garnish that I cut up just before the webinar started. Um, <laughs> again, appearances are everything. So we have a little strawberry there that looks kind of like a rose. 
Um, and then we'll hit it with a little mint. That This is going to show up on TikTok tomorrow. I just feel it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here we have a strawberry rose milk tea with a beautiful rose and a mint. Um, garnish cutting, YouTube it, how to cut cool stuff and get a sharp knife and have fun with it. <laughs> in the Q and A, asked uh, what kind of tea? Uh, black tea again. Uh, fresh brewed black tea. Uh, I got black tea bags. Um, English breakfast, black tea, any kind of tea that you're willing to brew um, will really kind of work. Oolong would be nice as well. A uh, green tea kind of make sure you're just matching the flavor. So if you're going to go with an earthy tea or a sweet or kind of a flavored one, just keep in mind um, whatever you're flavoring it with. Um, you just want to balance that correctly. Thanks, Dre. All right, we're going to jump to our last one, our last trend for you today. Oops, so sorry about that. Is next gen now? All right. The, um, we have spoken about the um, the different generations throughout some of our trends, um, but the next generation of mindful consumers who still want to enjoy happy hour are driving the trends of today and tomorrow. Um, they're look, they really love the low, no movement. Um, and it's really evolved. Um, Mona at Mona, we've been talking about mocktails and low, no for a long time, but really this last year and for this year, we're really seeing it grow. Um, there's a huge demand for elevated drinks that are wellness focused, including sugar alternatives, functional additives. And like we've said, um, a couple of times, dairy alternatives, they're always looking for, you know, ways to craft what they want to consume. Um, and you can see it's a powerful stat. 80% are interested in functional ingredients. So like we have our boost line, it's really easy to add um, these types of ingredients to beverages. Um, but we also have some great honey products. We've got our natural organic sweet honey sweetener, our natural zero line. And next, to show how this can um, translate to a beverage, Dre is going to make this delicious um, hot honey tea. Yeah, this is legit. I love our hot honey. We are seeing that sweet heat be a huge trend. So that combination of something sweet, something, some heat to it, where I've got, got a pepper, chipotle or whatever, this particular case, hot honey, we saw the rise of hot honey within the last couple of years. Um, so uh, it's a lot more friendly for consumers. They're really kind of looking for that experience. Um, our hot honey gives you a great nose as well. It has a beautiful aroma. So the minute I open it, you're going to be able to smell those jalapeno notes and that fresh honey mix is absolutely wonderful. Um, so let's go ahead and start this one. It's uh, Ice Sparkling Hot Honey BT is what we're calling it. Um, we're going to start off with three quarters of hot honey. Okay. Wrong side. <laughs> three quarters ounce of fresh lemon juice. Uh, three ounces of fresh steeped green tea. And we're going to top that with club soda. So right here, I'm going to put it with my eyes. And it should measure out to three ounces. Two. And that's one. Lovely. Um, we're going to give it a good stir right over the ice. to really get that honey down at the bottom to really kind of integrate itself into the cocktail. Nice golden color there. A nice golden color. We're looking for that fresh component. And it really, really, that looks great. Sweet, all right. A jalapeno pepper, a lemon wheel, and a mint sprig. Jalapeno pepper, a lemon wheel, That looks great. And the mint. Awesome. All right. And there Thanks, we have. Dre. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. I just really quickly want to mention, um, not to bring up Starbucks, but this week they launched some spicy lemonades. And I'm ex I'm I'm excited. I can thank them and we can thank them for educating consumers because I think they're seeing people want some spice in their drink. And so we have some great solutions with our hot honey syrup, our spicy agave. Um, the jalapeno concentrated flavor. So we have some great recipes that I probably taste better than Starbucks. So check out our website if you um, need some inspiration to add some spice to your 
lemonades this summer. So good. <laughs> I can tell. Someone That's asked, like, was that a uh, green tea that you used? It was. It was. Same. And again, same. I double steep them. I get two bags, steep them in a cup. I like to double strength it. Just my thing. Um, eight ounces, steep it for four minutes, pull them out. And like someone else said, you can slowly refrigerate it to kind of combat that cloudiness. Yeah. Um, I, Dre, I saw a question about um, <clears throat> ube syrup being used to make ice cream. So yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. no, I've I, actually, I, we've tasted <laughs> it. It's delicious. <laughs> Yeah, uh, our our ube loves ice cream. It loves dairy. Um, I love making coffee with it. I've been I've been playing a lot with it recently, um, utilizing it in chai. Uh, ube loves it. And again, like Heather said, we are seeing it in cocktails. So we are seeing ube sours and ube margaritas, ube old fashions. Um, again, it was kind of like how dragon fruit started. Dragon fruit, you know, came onto the scene and everybody was kind of wary. But now I can't. Again, I can't throw. Everyone has dragon fruit. Kind of we're, we're kind of ube is in that same world. You have that bright purple color, that sweetness, those vanilla, cinnamon fig notes are absolutely delicious. Um, and it loves dairy, like I said. So yes, ube ice cream recommended. Definitely. Great. All right. Hop back to the presentation. I think the next one is our last uh, pop quiz question. All right, uh, we will do the pop quiz question first. And then right after that, we'll get to the first raffle. So let's launch the pop quiz. Which 2024 Monin trend supports the launch of Hydration Boost? One, Timeless Temptations, Kitchen Meets Bar, Flavor Journey, Under the Influencer, or Next Gen Now. Put into the poll what you think it is. And remember, you will have a chance to win a raffle, an amazing prize by Monin. So be sure to answer it and give it your best shot. And let's, uh, while we do that, I will do the raffle right after. <laughs> okay, so I will uh, give it another 10 seconds and then we will close the poll. So think. Click and submit. All right. Five, four, three. Actually, a lot of people are still answering. <laughs> Two, <laughs> one. Okay, closed. The poll has ended. Okay, let's figure out who won. Oh, uh, can you unshare your screen oh, for one yep, moment? Um, absolutely. We will. We We want to show this bucket. <laughs> and spotlighted <laughs> okay here we go here we go this is so exciting okay so the winner is 13 which is let's put here uh my team has who 13 is in the chat mm -hmm. so they are going to see 13 is Ido Re. congratulations Ido we are going to email you and get you the uh, information so we can send you your um, prize. All right. Great. Then we are going to do the next raffle at the end. Uh, and yeah, we also, one more thing I just wanted to mention before I forget, uh, everyone here that has participated in the webinar, we are going to be sending you a special promo code for Monin products. So everyone here is a winner. Okay, back to you, Heather. Great. Well, I think that um, wraps, we're almost done here. The next one was just, I want to thank you guys for um, joining us today. Um, Dre and I hope that you are walking away feeling inspired. Um, we showed some great spring flavors, uh, but really uh, we have a lot of great recipes for any type of beverage menu. So we hope that you're excited and hopefully everybody's having some great spring weather. <laughs> I don't know if we have any more questions, maybe that we haven't answered. I was oh, going to. Uh, yes. Uh, in the Q&A, uh, they wanted to ask you guys if you have a ice cream ube recipe uh, oh, that you could yeah. share. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can get that to you, Kayla. Um, I don't know how we would share it to that specific um customer, but we have one we can share. Sure, sure. Uh, Lollipop also has one as well. 
Um, okay, perfect. So that's awesome. Okay, okay and great. Another person um, asked, what would uh, you recommend as a starter kit? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> well, I think it really depends on what type of establishment you have. But I can say, for an example, if you're opening a coffee shop, um, you want to have some core flavors. We always recommend a vanilla, a hazelnut, a caramel, and then either a sugar-free option or a seasonal flavor. Um, for example, during the holiday season, maybe a toasted marshmallow or a gingerbread, and then you can swap that fourth flavor out seasonally. Also, don't forget your sauces and smoothie mixes as well. But you don't need to have 20 different products. Correct. You can really do a lot with a small amount of products because a lot of those restaurants and coffee shops don't have all the space. Um, so that's why we love the versatility of our products. Correct. Rotating LTOs is really, you know, you set up a nice core, you know, like like Heather said, a nice hazelnut, a vanilla, stuff like that, caramel. And then, you know, you have that ability to rotate that seasonal option um, and keep your recipe the same. So even if you have a nice latte that is a recipe, you know, you have that base recipe and then in the springtime, you make it with lavender lemon. In the summertime, all you do is switch out the lavender for coconut. Now you have a coconut option. You can remove lavender and, you know, do coconut for, unless lavender does, does well. I mean, we are seeing these LTO, original LTOs turn into core. So there are uh, places out there that are, you know, that are pouring lavender all year long just because it sells that well. And like Heather's point, um, you didn't, there's not a seasonality with Monin. We're going to deliver you that bottle the same all year long, no matter what time of the year or where you are in the country. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. Uh, we have a we have a lot of questions. We'll try to get through it as much as we can. <laughs> but what do you suggest uh, we do when customers ask for light ice? Would we adjust the recipe to fill the cup with less ice? Man, that's a tricky one. So again, if you're it's made for 16 ounces, that should be incorporating ice. Or if it's made for 12 ounces. Um, if you pour it without ice, then obviously it's going to be short from the top. Uh, I would um, I would absolutely not fidget with the recipe. I would just kind of explain to the consumer, you know, the recipe is balanced already to have, you know, three ounces. You know, you want you have a total yield. And if your total yield is, you know, seven ounces of liquid or eight ounces of liquid to make a 16 ounce, um, that's not going to change. And which ingredient are you going to pick to elevate? Um, so really, it's kind of just a conversation and an educational piece. Uh, obviously, if the customer wants light ice, you take you just get, offer them light ice. Uh, but I wouldn't really start fidgeting with the recipe because let's just say you add more milk. Now you're, you know, you're missing the syrup or you add more syrup. Now it's too sweet. So it's, um, it's one of those things where um, I would just educate the consumer and educate your staff into being able to kind of translate that well to the consumer. Um, okay, let's um, do maybe a few more questions. We are running out of time. Maybe just one, two more. Um, does the ube syrup create a good purple color? Oh, yeah. Um, yes, uh, and definitely in drinks. Am I still on the screen? Yeah, Can actually, let me stop. I'm going to stop sharing mine. There we go. Yeah, just, and just really quickly so we can see that. And again, I'm not making a drink here, but this is just club soda um, that I'm pouring into this cup. And I'll go ahead and just give you three quarters of uve so you can really see, because I know we saw it in coffee and coffee didn't really bring it out. But this is just club soda. Again, if it's like a lemonade or something, I'm going to go even more of a purple. But yeah. it is it is a beautiful purple um, right with soda. So again, if I was to put a little lemonade in that, um, it'll even brighten that purple even a little more. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, That's going to catch it's people's attention. Purple. Yeah, it's great. And I just made another drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So uh, are we ready to do the next raffle? All right. All right. Let me go ahead and. Okay. We are going to do the last raffle, guys. This is so exciting. <laughs> so let me go ahead and pick one. Ah! <laughs> okay, so. Okay. Oh, hold on. All right, let me do it again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Okay, 35, Woo. Woo. wait, what is 35? Let's see, 
Uh, 35 is Mary Dyster. Mary, congratulations! Yay! All right, so uh, we will be reaching out to you uh, after this to get uh, the information so that we can send you your prize. Amazing. Wow. This was such a great webinar. I've learned so much. I uh, want to taste all the Monin beverages that we just made. They look beautiful. Not only, I'm sure they taste amazing, but you will only know if you get the product. So be sure right. to check out all of the Monin products that we have. We are um, always here. I know we didn't get to answer any questions, but uh, we do have our uh, contact information. Um, and we would love to answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, just email us and uh, we'll answer you guys. Um, and um, yes, and the coupon that we are going to send out for the promo code for all Monin products is going to be emailed to all of you the next day. So tomorrow. So be sure to uh, subscribe to our channels and uh, subscribe to Monin. And we are uh, can't wait to see you guys next time. Great. Thank you, guys. We had so much Thanks fun everyone. today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day.